Welcome everyone to another CTC Software webinar. My name is Sean Zerbis, the Director of BIM Development here at CTC Software, and today we get to continue with the Hive CMS User Learning Series. We're going to be talking in detail about working with design application specific filters. That's the whole focus today. I know originally it was a different topic today, though it's going to be design app specific filters. And we want to make sure you have the update on how all of this works for you as best as possible. So as always, of course, if you have questions about today's topic, we encourage you to just throw them into the Q&A window. Uh, and I'll try to answer them live while going through the presentation. But I also save a QA session for the end in case you have questions that maybe don't fit well within the context of what I'm talking about. I try to answer all those at the end of the webinar as well. So if you're joining us live, definitely leverage that questions window. Also, as always, of course, this is a recorded webinar. So once we are done, this is going to get published to our YouTube channel. And if you happen to be viewing this on YouTube, congratulations. That's fantastic. Uh, we encourage you to subscribe there to uh, let us, or to, to be able to be notified whenever we are publishing new webinars once the recording is processed up. All right. So with that, let's kind of talk about today's topic. I mean, Hive really does have some good quality filtration, we feel, and uh, hopefully you do as well. Now, some of those specific filters, they are related directly to a particular design application. The Revit and AutoCAD specifically, and they have their own sections inside the filters panel itself. The whole goal here is to allow you to filter down to exactly what you need, and in some cases, that is related directly to the app-specific criteria. So I'm going to show you today exactly how this works and how each filter can be used and some of the nuances of how it's used to find exactly what you want. And then I'll reference another webinar that we've done recently, which is saving your searches. In case you do some of these things on the regular, you can save yourself some clicking in the UI to always give yourself you know, the, the proper filters exactly as you want them. So we're going to talk about some very specific things here. We're going to talk about expanding and collapsing the application-specific filters themselves, where you find the filters and how to work with them in the first place. Then we're going to actually take a look at some of the specific abilities that relate to the filters and what they mean and how it's different app to app because different apps have different requirements. We're going to use them to refine a specific selection. We're actually going to use those filters live today. And then we're also going to take a look at a special option which allows you to limit the results exclusively to that design app. I'm going to talk about why that is, why we want that feature or perhaps don't want that feature. And since I'm not big on death by PowerPoint, I like to do all of this live. So we're going to do this live in the Hive CMS product directly. If you want to follow along with me, I would encourage you to go ahead and open up your Hive CMS and be signed in. Have either Revit or AutoCAD or both open, depending on which apps you typically would use. And we're going to go through and do this all live today so you can kind of feel how this works. First off, let's take a look at the filter control themselves. So I'm going to be doing this all live inside the Hive product here. Uh, when you first sign in, I'm signed in as a, an end user, Joe Demo, And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just jump to the search panel here. You could either run a search at the top or you can click directly on search. Either way, it's going to bring you to this area here. Now, and in my case, I don't have any searches run, so my results screen is empty and that's okay. I also happen to currently have my filters panel open right now. Uh, I'm going to collapse that for the moment just so you can see how to access the filters panel in case you're unfamiliar with it because you need that open. Now we talk in detail in another one of our webinars about these controls up here uh, for the display control, but I'm going to be using the one for filters here to open that up. And since I will be using filters very consistently, it's going to be much more convenient for me to have the filters panel pinned on screen. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the little pin here, and that will lock the filters panel out here even when I click away. And I would encourage you to have your filters panel always open as well. Now, within the filters panel, yours may look more like mine does now if you've expanded out your filters. And uh, within here, there is, of course, the apply button at the top to apply a filter to this. And if I just hit apply, 
what it's going to do is run a search for whatever I had up here, which was nothing. So it puts an asterisk in and runs a search for everything. And it comes back with absolutely everything that I could possibly find, which I would never typically do because that's not very useful. I don't want to find 8,900 pieces of content. I want to find something specific. So usually I'd run a search up here for something. For today though, I am not going to run a specific search because I'm not focusing on the search bar. Instead, I'm focusing on these two design app specific filters down here. Now I do happen to have AutoCAD 2023 open. I also happen to have Revit open here. And if I pin Hive to the foreground so it can't go to the background, you'll notice that as I switch between the individual design apps, what will happen is Hive will automatically target that design app. So when I double click on content, it will try to target this particular design app when I load that into my project. But that has absolutely nothing to do with searching. And today, our focus is on searching and filtering. So this does have a little bit to do with what content I can see. For example, with Revit 2020 open, Hive automatically today does not show me future content. So if it's content that exclusively exists in 21 or 22 or whatever future version, I won't be able to see it and load it because I can't consume that content when it comes from a future version. It will only show me 2020 stuff and older. AutoCAD does not do that because all of the modern AutoCAD content is usable in pretty much all versions as it is today with the supported versions 2020 through 24. So no need to worry about that at the moment. But again, that's not really talking about the filter control panel over here. So that's what we're gonna focus on next. One thing you might notice is that when I have Revit active, it does automatically expand the Revit filters. It does give me just a little bit of a heads up there. Now I can collapse that if I want to. If I was in AutoCAD, it would also by default expand the AutoCAD filters because it's gonna make an assumption that that's what I wanna see. But first, let's take a look at actually sort of getting access to the controls. And you just saw me do that here. It's basically these little expander bars right there. AutoCAD filters, expand or collapse. Revit filters, expand or collapse. Now for today, I'm gonna have both of these fully expanded. And I do currently have the advanced filters collapsed because that's not relevant really to today's conversation. So I'm gonna leave that collapsed for now. We're just gonna have Revit filters and AutoCAD filters both open so I can talk about all the filter controls inside of there. Now specifically, I wanna talk about what the abilities are for each app's filters. I'm gonna start with Revit and then I'm gonna focus on the AutoCAD filters here. So Revit filters first. There's a control here to only show Revit content. We'll come back to that a little later. There's Revit categorical filters right here. So when I want to filter for just doors or just air terminals or whatever, I can limit my res returned results to just those Revit categories when it's Revit content that's found. If you happen to be working in a mixed units environment, you can also control whether it's imperial or metric content that is returned to you based on the units that were discovered inside the families themselves or inside the content. Depending on what kind of content you're using, you might care about the hosting. When I'm returning air terminals, I may only want air terminals that are either face-based or not hosted at all. I probably, if I'm MEP user doing mechanical, electrical, or plumbing design, I probably don't want content that's ceiling hosted or floor hosted or wall hosted because I probably don't have those types of objects in my model, so I can filter for that. You also have the ability to limit your search results to a very specific Revit version. So if I only wanted, for example, to return Revit 2018 content, I could choose to do so. Uh, and then when Revit content is in my window, it will only be content that is available from 2018. And I can consume that in 2020, but you get that filter control there. You simply use these filters by checking it. So if I wanted, say, a face-based piece of content that was from 2018 in Imperial units, that's an air terminal, I could run a search for this, I could hit apply, and it would give me some search results back that are air terminals that's Imperial face based in 2018. And it'll give me some stuff back for that. Now you're gonna notice I see a bunch of extra things here that have nothing at all to do with Revit. And we're gonna come back and talk about that in just a moment here.
I obviously don't have any content that matches this criteria, and therefore nothing Revit-based actually showed up in my results. So let me talk also then, let me clear that, let me talk also about the AutoCAD side. AutoCAD has fewer filters, but they are just as powerful. Uh, I have again the only AutoCAD content option. I also have here AutoCAD categories, which has everything from AutoCAD, assemblies, blocks, command macros, list routines, scripts, sheet sets, all of the civil 3D content inside of here with all of its styles, whatever's available to me inside my hive space, I can filter for any of this. And all of these lists here are actually searchable. So the AutoCAD list here is searchable if what I'm looking for is something like, uh, I don't know, site. I can filter for that and yep, look at that. Building site styles are available to me in this little drop down here if I filter for that. Okay, same thing would be true here in the Revit categories. I could filter for just wall and it would find me anything that relates to walls. So that makes that searching and finding things in that list significantly faster. So those are some of the abilities here of the filters themselves. So let's see this really in use, okay? So let's, let's look for something in particular. Let's just say I wanted to find, I don't know, a single door. If I type in the word single, I find a lot of items that are related to single. And some of them may or may not be doors. Eventually I'll probably find a door inside of here. But if I know that what I want is a door and I'm looking for Revit content, I should come down here and tell it that I wanna find doors. That'll let me pick that Revit category in particular here and I can reapply this. And then instead of giving me back a ton of casework and other trash that I don't want, I'm now finding Revit doors in my search results that match single. So I'll probably not find any double doors in this list because they don't match single, right? So that gives me a real easy ability to filter down for just what I'm looking for. Now there are times when you really wanna limit your result set to exclusively the design app that you're searching. See, if I scroll down here far enough, it's possible, yeah, no, I didn't get anything here. Uh, let's search for shared, see what shows up. Okay, so uh, that might not be the best example, though it did show me something that was not Revit related, and it obviously wasn't a door because it's a PDF, right? But it's showing me results outside of the design app when I'm searching for something and filtering for content here. And so uh, let me try, let me try air. That might be another thing. Uh, and let's try terminals, I guess. See what shows up here. Okay, so I've got a bunch of air terminals in the list. Um, let's just see here. If I can get something that uh, shows up that I don't really want to show up, I wanna show a good reason why I might do something like this. I had the, the document show up from before. Um, I'm not really seeing a lot of content that doesn't match the Revit content at this point. Yeah, no, this is all Revit content. Let's try, I got one, I got one. Sorry, I should have thought of this ahead of time. Hydrant, and uh, with the hydrant, I am going to uh, not search anything at all, no categories, but I only really want Revit content in this list. And you'll notice I'm getting AutoCAD blocks out here perhaps. Uh, I am getting civil 3D styles, and I'm also getting some Revit content here, though my previews aren't fantastic. Here's a good example. This is a Revit piece of content right there, um, but I'm getting mixed results. And really all I want here specifically is just Revit content only. I don't really care what the category is. I just want Revit content, and that's it. So if you check the box, only Revit content, there's a couple of things that are gonna happen. First off, when I check this, you're gonna notice the AutoCAD filters down below, they minimize and I cannot expand it no matter what I do because when I'm choosing only Revit content, it will not show me anything other than Revit content. There will be no PDFs, there will be no AutoCAD blocks, there will be no nothing other than the Revit content specifically. So if I hit apply here, now it's gonna be exclusively Revit content that somehow matches my search string of hydrant. Now, if I reverse that, I could uncheck the Revit content and instead check only AutoCAD content. Then when I hit apply again, 
And notice how Revit filters has been collapsed here. Now it is only going to give me back AutoCAD content and it will not give me any Revit content. So there are times when I run searches for things and I do not in any form or fashion want to get back stuff outside of my design application. I can tell Hive, please only give me this. And then after you've given me this, I can further filter it if I really wanted to, to a specific category. Like in the case of the AutoCAD side here, I could say only give me blocks or only give me styles of a certain, like a point style in this case. So there's some options there for what you can do. You can limit those results down based on the design app that you're filtering for, Revit versus AutoCAD. And then within there, again, you can filter for specific categories. So if I said point, only give me point styles, that's it. Only AutoCAD content, now I'm only getting point styles, that's AutoCAD content. And if I had to uncheck this, then it might give me AutoCAD content as well as potentially Revit content as well as potentially other things. And so I really want to make sure that I'm only getting back that AutoCAD content. That is it. Um, and that's why when I hit apply, it's just giving me the three that I've asked for here. Okay. So I'm going to throw one final thank you out there. Uh, again, we always do appreciate when you show up live and have the ability to interact. Uh, we do look forward to seeing you in future CTC webinars. So you do, again, get that opportunity to interact if you need to. Have a fantastic day, and uh, we hope you enjoyed what you, what you uh, saw today.